لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي صدق الله العظيم Honorable viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, all our seekers of knowledge, seekers after the truth, and also to our YouTube and the Facebook viewers, I greet you all with the greetings of peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. May the peace, guidance, mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Alhamdulillah, first and foremost, we give praises and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our sustainer, for blessing us with health and strength, for granting us the opportunity to be here for another segment of our program this evening, Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, bringing the light of Islam to each and every one of you. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, respective viewers, brothers and sisters also, for taking the time off to view our program and for inviting us, alhamdulillah, in your homes so that we can be able to learn and benefit um, about this beautiful deen of ours, alhamdulillah. So without further ado, brothers and sisters, as usual, we will commence our program with an opening Quranic recitation so as to gain the mercy, rahmah, barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember our golden rules whenever the Quran is recited, let us listen attentively, be silent so that we can be able to receive some mercy and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, we have provided the translation of what has been recited so that each and every one of you will have a brief understanding of what is being said by the permission of God Almighty. So without further ado, brothers and sisters, let, our, let us turn our attention now to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. Surely 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken the truth. Beautiful recitation of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever blessings would have earned there, would have accrued from that recitation. We beg and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower that blessings upon each and every one of you. All our brothers and sisters who are affected with any difficulty, hardship in life, we ask and we pray that the blessings earned from that recitation will be showered upon each and every one of you. Believing brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. You know, our program, Let's Talk Islam, it is aired every Monday evenings right here on Channel 6 to 9. And also we have our watch party that we have every Monday evenings at 8.30 on our Facebook page. And we encourage each and every one of you to you know, um, view those programs where we can able to have your various reminders and updates. And also you can benefit tremendously from our programs by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's Talk Islam with Imam Muhammad in collaboration with the Freedom Hope Sunnah Masjid will be having its monthly lecture at the Freedom Hope Masjid that is located on the West Bank of Demrara, Alhamdulillah. That program is scheduled for Saturday coming insha'Allah ta'ala after the Maghrib Salah. Um, and we extend an invitation to each and every one of you to come and be a part of that blessed um, and sanctified gathering where the Sakina and the Rahmah and the Barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon the inhabitants of that gathering where teaching and learning is involved as well by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Saturday coming insha'Allah um, between Maghrib to Isha, we have our monthly lecture there at the Freedom Hope um, Sunnah al-Masjid insha'Allah ta'ala. Believing brothers and sisters, let us take a look at our hadith of the day insha'Allah. Gönlerde hasretin var Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Welcome back brothers and sisters to our program That was our hadith of the day Beautiful advice, golden advice from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And you know we always ask that whatever information is given on our program Let us inculcate it in our lives Let us try to act upon it Share them with your friends and family by the permission of God Almighty. Our program this evening, Let's Talk Islam, is coming your way with the kind compliments and the courtesy of NNS Al Wus Customs Brokerage Service, VNP Supermarket, Wolf Furniture Store, Abdul Fazil Gas Station, Fat Boys Discount Store, Sensation, West End Pharmacy, and Qayyim Academy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these brothers and sisters for taking the initiative. To invest in this educational program, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, bless their business, and may this be a means for them to enter into the parties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha'Allah. Believing brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, uh, I wish to discuss with each and every one of you a very important incident that took place in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And Alhamdulillah, we are coming down to the end of this blessed month of Rajab. This is the seventh month of the Islamic year. And this month of Rajab, it is considered to be amongst the four sacred months. There are four sacred months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for each and every one of us. And this was noted and highlighted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says in the Quran, Inna iddata shuhuri Allah, ithna ashra shahra. Indeed, the number of months with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is 12. Fi kitab illahi yawma khalaqa samawati wal ard um, This is in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala From the day God Almighty created the heavens and the earth Minha arba'atun huru Out of these 12 months that God Almighty has created Four of them are considered secret What are these four, four secret months, believing brothers and sisters? This has been highlighted to us by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa When he says that three of these secret months They come in succession Meaning that three of them come one after the other. So we have the month of Dhul Qada, the month of Dhul Hijjah, and then we have the month of Muharram. And the fourth one is the one by itself, which is the month of Rajab. So the month of Dhul Qada, it is the 11th month of the Islamic year, and this was made sacred simply because the people used to refrain from fighting in this month, in the time of the Prophet. And this month, it is the month leading up to the month of Hajj. So the month of Dhul Qadah, it is the month that is leading up to the month of Hajj. The month of Hajj, it is 
um, the month of Qurbani, it is a uh, blessed month. So this month of Dhul Qada is the month leading up or the preparations for the month of Hajj. And we have next in line is the month of Dhul Hijjah, which is the 12th month of the Islamic year and the second sanctified month. And this month, the month of Dhul Hijjah was made sacred because it is the month of Hajj. It is the month of Qurbani. It is the month where the, the Hujaj and the pilgrims, they undertake this miraculous um, and amazing journey um, traversing to the holy lands in Mecca uh, to perform the Hajj rituals in Mecca and the surroundings area of Mecca. It is a blessed month where the first 10 days of the Hijjah it is blessed in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was made mention um, in the book of Imam Tir Tirmidhi and also in the book of Ibn, Ibn Majah where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says that on no days is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more uh, valuable or more desired than the first 10 days of the Hijjah. The fast of each of these days is equal, equal to the fast of a whole year and the worship and the ibadat of these nights is equivalent to the worship and the ibadat of Laylatul Qadr. And also Hazrat Abu Qatada al-Ansari, he relates that the Rasulullah sallallahu was asked about the fasting, the song, um, on the day of Arafah. On the day of Arafah, it is the ninth of the Hijjah, it is where the Hujjaj will be on the plains of Arafah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu he replied that it compensates for the minor sins of the past year and also the common year as well. This hadith has been recorded in the book of Imam Muslim. And then we have the month of Muharram, which is the third sanctified month. It is the first month of the Islamic year. And this was made sacred simply because those who had given the opportunity to go to perform the Hajj and pilgrimage, they were now able to come back to their homes safely and the surroundings area after the performance of Hajj. And also the fasting of the day of Ashura, which is the 10th of Muharram. It is a very blessed day, a very blessed fast. And there is a beautiful incident, a well-known incident, brothers and sisters, that occurred on the tent of Ashura, uh, where the Prophet ﷺ, he entered into Medina, and he saw that the Jews, they were fasting on this day, subhanAllah. And he inquired, um, why are you fasting on this day, the tent of Ashura? And they say that this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, saved uh, Prophet Musa or Moses, from the clutches of Fir'aun and the oppression of Fir'aun, he, he saved himself and his people. And so we are fasting to show gratitude for this, subhanAllah. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that we are more dear to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and he instructed the companions to fast on the tent of, tent of Ashura, uh, the tent of Muharram, sorry, which is the day of Ashura. Um, and then he says the following year that you fast a day before or a day after so as to differentiate yourselves, subhanAllah. Um, so this is with regard to the, the, the three secret months, sanctified months, that comes in succession. And then the final month, the month of Rajab that we are in presently, is the, the seventh month of the Islamic year. And this was made sacred believing brothers and sisters simply because those coming from the farthest uh, area of Arabia were able to perform the Umrah and visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were able to go back to their homes safely. Um, this is the month leading to the month of Sha'ban. The month of Sha'ban leading to the month of Ramadan or the month of Sha'ban, it is a month, um, it is the forerunner to the month of uh, of Ramadan. And then thirdly, in the month of Rajab, there is this beautiful um, incident that took place in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu like I've mentioned earlier, the Isra and the Mi'raj. Um, so, and of course, when the Prophet Sallallahu saw the moon of Rajab, it was mentioned by Anas bin Malik that the Prophet ﷺ, he used to recite these words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma barik lana fi raja. O oh Allah, bless us in the month of Raja. Wa Sha'ban, bless us in the month of Sha'ban. Wa balighna Ramadan. Uh, expand our life. Grant us the ability to live to see the month of Ramadan. So that we can be able to capitalize on this uh, by the permission of God Almighty. So this is a beautiful supplication that I encourage each and every one of you to recite. We're in the blessed month of Rajab. Let us try to recite this supplication. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa bandigna Ramadan. But besides the fact that this month of Rajab is blessed, it is it holds a very significant 
um, incident in the life of the Prophet وسلم, known as the Isra and the Mi'raj. Um, many times we may not have the correct information and the correct knowledge concerning the occurrence of this incident. And this incident took place in the life of the Prophet وسلم, Al Isra and the Mi'raj took place in the blessed month of Rajab. Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Rajab. And according to the historians, based on the narrations and based on the traditions given by the traditionalists, they have concluded and stated that this incident took place on the 27th night of Rajab. Based on the traditionalists, uh, based on the narrations and so on, they concluded that the, this incident took place on the 27th night of Rajab by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, today being the 25th uh, day, this evening, Monday evening is the 26th uh, evening, the 26th night of Rajab. Tomorrow, Tuesday, the 2nd of April, Alhamdulillah, is the 26th day of Rajab. And tomorrow evening is the 27th night of Rajab by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this incident, Al-Isra and the Mi'raj, it is so remarkable that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has dedicated uh, and revealed an entire chapter of the Qur'an, chapter 17 of the Qur'an bearing the name Al-Isra, Surah Al-Isra or Surah Bani Israel, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this particular surah um, about the incident that took place in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And bear in mind, believing brothers and sisters, these incidents that took place in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is not for us to take as stories, it is not for us to take as, you know, sheer entertainment or for us to, to have this as fairy tale. No. It, it, it is there in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that you and I can take this as a lesson so that we can able to have some sort of understanding so that we can able to derive lessons from these occurrences in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, um, when the people, they took the blessed year of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they tied 11 knots, they recited what they had to recite on it and they placed that beneath a well and that witchcraft, that sehri, it took effect on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the question is, don't, don't you think that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala could have protected the Prophet وسلم, from that witchcraft, from that sehri? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have protected Rasulullah at that time. But God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allowed that to happen and to occur in the life of the Prophet وسلم, so that you and I can derive a lesson and so that we can be able to take um, lessons from that incident. In one occasion where one tribe invited the Prophet وسلم, for him to go to speak to them, and when the Prophet وسلم, um, reached in that area, they asked him to sit and wait that the chief will call in Rasulullah and they will have that discussion. So the Prophet وسلم, was sitting and his back was bracing a wall, a very high wall. But the intention that the, this tribe invited Rasulullah to come for this meeting was because they wanted to, um, to, you know, to kill the Prophet And they instructed somebody from that tribe to go up to that tall, the very high wall and stand there with a very huge rock and they will now drop that rock on the head of the Prophet ﷺ to kill him. But when Jibreel والسلام, saw that, he came and he told the Prophet ﷺ, Oh Rasulullah ﷺ, move from there, that these people want to kill you and the Prophet ﷺ was protected. On another occasion, the Prophet ﷺ was on a journey and he felt so tired that he took off his shoes and he lay beneath under a tree and he was taking some rest. And then a scorpion came and um, walked and crawled into his shoes. Now after some time, the Prophet ﷺ got up and he was now about to take his blessed foot, his right foot, to put that into that shoes. And Jibreel والسلام, came and said, Ya Rasulullah, that you need to shake that shoes out, that there is a scorpion in there that will harm you. And so, believing brothers and sisters, from amongst the etiquettes that we learn from amongst the etiquettes of putting on our shoes then we are advised and we are taught by the Prophet وسلم, that you should shake your shoes out um, dust it out before um, before you put your shoes shoes on your right foot in your right shoes the left one in the left that you should shake it out first before because you do not know what sort of harmful thing may be living or sleeping in your shoes um, for the whole night so amongst the etiquettes we were taught by the Prophet Subhanallah. So amongst these 
incidents that took place in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu It is there for you and I to derive lessons and we can take uh, reminders from them. Like the incident where uh, when the people, they uh, took the hair of the Prophet Sallallahu and they recited what they had to recite, the witchcraft, the sehari, the black magic, it took effect on the Prophet Sallallahu And so the two angels came, uh, Mikail alayhi salatu wasalam, and Jibreel, they came. Um, the Prophet ﷺ, he was resting at that time. One, of, one was standing at his foot side, foot side, one was standing at his head side, and they started to have a conversation. And one of the angels asked the other, What had happened to the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so the other replied and said that such and such took effect on the Prophet, ﷺ, the, black malik, the black magic, the witchcraft. Um, the other now asked, Where is that here of the Prophet? ﷺ? And then the other replied that it is at this particular point, at this particular place, under so and so. And so when the Prophet ﷺ, um, and he was listening to the conversation as well between these two angels. So when Mikail and, Isra, uh, and Jibreel والسلام, left, they went away. The Prophet ﷺ, he took a handful of companions and he went to the exact spots. He found his hair with the 11 knots. And but by that time, brothers and sisters, two particular uh, chapter of the Quran was revealed and each and every one of you you know that when we're affected with any um, you know sehri, black magic evil eye and so forth then we're taught that we recite Surah Nas um, Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Al-Falaq Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Nas to the end and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commanded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to recite every ayah of those two um, chapters of the Quran and when he recited one ayah of the of that, that those verses uh, those chapters one knot was uh, was untwined it was um, uh, it was uh, loosened and by the time he finished reciting both surah or both chapters of the Quran the all the knots the 11 knots were um, untied and it was loosened subhanallah so according to the commentators of the Quran the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted this incident to occur in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so that you and I can take a lesson, we can able to um, learn something from this. What is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach us, believing brothers and sisters? First and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to understand that black magic, witchcraft, sehri can take effect. It can take effect on every single person. You can be the most pious person, you can be uh, a Rojadari for example, you can be a Namazi, you can be a Dari, you can be the most pious person. The witchcraft can take effect on you. It took effect on the Prophet Sallallahu who is the most uh, beloved of Allah, the best creation to set foot on the face of this earth. It affected the Prophet Sallallahu therefore it can affect you and me, believing brothers and sisters. And secondly, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants to teach us that when this affects a person what is it that you and i have to do what is it that we have to recite what is the remedy and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us to recite surah al-falaq and surah al-nas to the end subhanallah so believing brothers and sisters these incidents that took place in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is there for you and i to take lessons from it similarly the Isra and the Mi'raj, this great and miraculous journey that took place in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is there so that you and I can derive lessons. We can take lessons um, from this by the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. God Almighty tells us in the Quran, um, in Surah Al-Isra, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Subhanalladhi asra bi'abidihi layla min al-masjid al-haram. Exalted is he. Uh, glorification is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who took his servant by night from Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his servant by night from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa and the surroundings it is blessed. But the question is why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on this miraculous journey as we've mentioned earlier, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms this by saying, لِنُرِيَهُ min ayatina, لِنُرِيَهُ min ayatina, So as to show him his signs. So that you and I, subhanAllah, we can able to take lessons from this believing brothers and sisters. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. And this journey which will take, um, you know, usually take months to cover, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did this within a small space of time. Within a small space of time. Um, and so when we hear al-Isra, when we hear al-Isra, it literally means a night journey or a journey by night. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he moved from uh, Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa um, in Jerusalem. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he now undertook the second phase of that journey, which is to move to the highest, um, ascend to the, the, to the heavens, um, where he... Um, he ascended above the heavens to the uh, to the Sidratul Muntaha uh, until he reached the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was moving from heavens upon heavens and heavens upon heavens in the uh, reaching prophets upon prophets and Nabi upon Nabi from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam to Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And that particular phase is known as the Mi'raj, the ascension, subhanAllah. But bear in mind, brothers and sisters, that this entire journey only took a small portion of the night. And when the Prophet وسلم, he got up and he mentioned this to the people that um, what had happened to him that night that he went from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa and then he um, ascended to the heavens in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this was only done within a small portion of the night. Then subhanAllah the people they, they started to ridicule him. They started to call him a liar. They started to call him a madman. That they wanted to know that how come a journey like this that takes approximately 11 months to cover that you are saying, O oh Prophet of Allah, that you did this within a small portion of the night and then what makes it more worse is that you also went to the heavens as well. You're a madman, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the people, they started to call him a madman, they ridiculed him, um, they called him a liar. Uh, some of the people, some of the weak Muslims as well, they rejected Islam, they rejected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they rejected that incident as well. So the, the, the people, they went to Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and they came and they asked him a question. They say, oh Abu Bakr, if a person comes to you and say that I have uh, traversed from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa in just a small portion of the night, will you believe that individual? And Abu Bakr, I mean logically Abu Bakr says that no, that is impossible. That cannot be done within a small portion of the night. So they say to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, that that man Muhammad who you follow, he claims that he had undertaken that journey within a small portion of the night. And then he also say that he also went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and stand in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you know what Abu Bakr radiallahu an said, respected viewers, brothers and sisters? Abu Bakr, he says that if Muhammad says that, then I also believe him as well. Subhanallah. So when, when uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard that Abu Bakr is testifying to this and testifying to the truthfulness of this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had given him the title as Siddiq. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given him the title as Siddiq. Uh, and so when we hear Abu Bakr radiallahu an, we will hear the title Abu Bakr as Siddiq, subhanAllah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off this uh, ayah of the Quran in Surah Al Isra, um, describing this night journey, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Subhanalladhi asra bi abidihi." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Subhanalladhi." Allah is glorifying Himself, exalted is He, glorifying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to indicate that this incident of the Isra and the Mi'raj occur only through the power and the might of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That this has nothing to do with human intervention. This has nothing to do with human ability, brothers and sisters. This is beyond human comprehension, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by saying, subhanAllah, glorifying himself. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues by saying that we have taken the servant on a night journey to show him your signs, to teach him your signs, subhanAllah, so that we can be able to learn lessons um, from this incident by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now on our program this evening, I wish to share with you some of the incidents that took place in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas radiallahu an, he um, reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was on the night journey, he himself and Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam, 
and uh, as they were passing by they saw an old woman on the road and this old woman called out to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam he says that do not get distracted do not um, do not get distracted do not look back continue on your journey um, you know put your head straight stay on the on the straight path do not get distracted so after some time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that who was that old woman um, and then as they traversed on the journey again they saw an old man and this old man called out to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam says that do not get distracted put your head straight stay on the, on the straight path um, do not get distracted from that call so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inquired who was that old man who was that old woman Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam says that that old woman it is the representation of a dunya subhanallah that she called out to you and she wants to distract you from your right, right path that that old woman is very old and so too is the dunya it is very old that old woman her time is coming to an end and so too that this dunya is coming to an end that old woman subhanallah has uh that old woman has limited time available for her and so too it is so too the dunya has very limited time subhanallah and so he says that Jibreel continues and says that that old man that called out to you that is shaitan shaitan wants to distract you subhanallah and so similarly brothers and sisters at dunya and a shaitan the wants to distract you and i wants to distract you and bring us away and pull us away from the right path subhanallah they wants to they, they, they want to uh cause a distraction or a diversion pulling us away from our real destination and goal which is to attain paradise and jannah subhanallah and then anas related again in this hadith recorded in the book of imam abu daud the prophet وسلم, he passed by a group of people uh, and he saw that they had fingernails made out of copper and they took their fingernails and they were digging into their face digging into their skin digging into their flesh and so the prophet وسلم, he inquired who are these people Jibreel والسلام, says that these are the people who used to backbite and speak ill and slander and carry false steals. These are the people and this is the punishment that they will receive until the day of judgment. SubhanAllah. Can you imagine brothers and sisters that you are being given copper fingernails because you backbite and you slander and you carry false steals and you ill-treat others and now you have to dig into your skin and uh, dig into your face, dig into your chest, dig into your face, subhanAllah. This is the punishment for those individuals. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw uh, yet again on this journey a group, of, uh, a group of people who were in a very big lake, a river, and they, were, they, swim to one, they, uh, they swim to one side of the river, the river bank, and they will now gather stone and make that into a morsel of food and they will have to now eat that um, stone and they will now swim to the other side of the bank they will now swim again to the, others, um, the, the, the first uh, corner of that bank, gather some morsel of food made out of stone and bricks, and they will have to uh, consume that, subhanAllah. So the Prophet uh, inquired from Jibreel, who are these people? And Jibreel said that these are people from your ummah who were involved in riba, in interest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that haram, it is forbidden, but they continue to consume it, and this will be their state. Um, it will be their state until the day of Yom al Qiyamah, and of course, a separate punishment will be inflicted, a more severe punishment will be inflicted on such an individual. And also, uh, the Prophet ﷺ passed by a group of people who actually had their heads being uh, squashed with a big rock, and then their heads will now regain its original form, and then it will be squashed again with a big rock. And so, this punishment will be continuously, continuously until the day of Yom al Qiyamah. The Prophet ﷺ inquired, Who are these people? Jibreel says that these are people from your ummah who never perform a single prayer. They never perform a single salah, subhanAllah. And so this will be the punishment of these individuals until the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah, that their heads will be squashed with a very big rock, and it will, be regain, it will regain its original form, and then it will be squashed again with a rock again, and it will continuously happen until the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah, and a separate and more severe punishment will be in store for such an individual believing brothers and sisters uh, actually <coughs> we're out of time uh, uh, by the permission of God Almighty but these are some of the incidents that we can learn from the life of the Prophet وسلم, from this incident Al-Isra and the Mi'araj so uh, in closing brothers and sisters we learned
from this uh, incident that took place in the life of the Prophet وسلم, never to consume riba or interest, ne uh, never neglect a single salah, or else our heads will be crushed. And also, we should not backbite and speak e speak ill of others. Um, we do not want to be amongst those who have those finger uh, copper fingernails that you'll have to dig into your flesh by the permission of God Almighty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you that is take the good out of this message inshallah on our program this evening inculcate this in your life by the permission of God Almighty. Until then brothers and sisters join me for another segment of Let's Talk Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My beloved brothers and sisters, it's great to be talking to you. And as you know, we all have examinations in life, uh, different types of examinations, and each one has to try very hard. As you know, uh, in a setup where there is a school or a university, uh, at the end of every semester, trimester, or term, you would have some examinations in order to qualify you to get to the next level. And as you progress in life, the examinations become more and more difficult. And uh, you would know that without working, we don't achieve. We know the common saying, Man jadda wa jadda. Whoever works very hard will definitely see the fruit of that particular working. So just like we have people who fail because they did not work hard or they did not understand that the examination would become more and more difficult as time passes, we also have an issue with the deen where as we progress in life, we will have more and more tests and they become more and more difficult until we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu was told, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينِ Worship your Rabb until death overtakes you. Worship your Rabb until the end, right up to the end. Keep on worshiping, continue. Do not stop, do not pause, do not lose hope. In fact, progress and become stronger and stronger. If you take a look at uh, some of the other verses of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, makes mention of فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ You know, with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivering the message, it was not easy and it was difficult. He faced so many challenges. He continued and he persevered 23 whole years of nubuwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, when you have, uh, subhanallah, subhanallah, you know, the achievement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant each person achievement according to his will obviously but also connected to the effort that that particular person makes. If we were to give up suddenly, we would never be able to achieve even Jannah. Imagine a person who reads Salah for 70 years and suddenly the last year just before they die, they give up their Salah, they throw in the blanket and say that's it. Such a person has been mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu where a person could be worshipping Allah for so many years and right at the end they, 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 they turn so they are cast into hellfire and a person could be uh, uh, disobedient for so many years and right at the end they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn back to him so they will be from amongst those who go to paradise. So it's important for us to know that to give up you don't know how close you are to the end. Imagine a person digging a tunnel for example and right when they are near the end they suddenly give up thinking that you know what uh, I don't know how long this is going to carry on for. Had they carried on for a minute longer they would have broken through. So with us we need to continue fulfill your salah progress develop don't think for a moment that life is going to become any easier. The only thing that will happen is with the development of the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we become more content, we understand the nature of the world, we understand the nature of the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we enjoy going through them in the sense that we are content, we are happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, not only do I say work hard to achieve here in the dunya and may Allah bless you and grant you success in these examinations, but even in the akhirah, we ask Allah to bless you, to open your doors, uh, to prepare for the akhirah, it's not uh, an easy task but with the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things will be made easy and at the same time with the constant preparation without giving up hope uh, never ever giving up never say no uh, never just throw in the towel by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will achieve and we will achieve great heights wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh
ذكر الرسول تشحذ الهمة يا ربي بجاه النبي أزيح الغمة يا ربي Now you can really go shopping in Lenora at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road. Come in and enjoy great prices on the widest range of groceries, beverages, frozen meats and vegetables, and ice cream too, even food for your pets. Get detergents and bathroom soaps and cleaners, the full range and all the brands. Pots and pans for the kitchen, cutlery and crockery for dining. And all the household items you need to make homes so comfortable. Even towels and napkins. A whole department full. The ladies will love our cosmetics collection perfect for gifts for special occasions and just what you promised yourself. Our pharmacy has patent medicines and over-the-counter drugs and we can fill your prescription too. VNP Beauty Salon has the best hairstylist on hand to make you look and feel just great. And our Indian wear is the best bridal and formal wear for ladies and gents with footwear and handbags, costume jewelry and Indian herbal cosmetics. Visit our Cyberlink Solution Business Center for all your passport and visa forms with photographs. We do photo and color copying, scanning, laminating, business cards, flyers, tickets, wedding invitations, Digicel and GT&T credit, internet calls and more at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road, West Coast, Demerara. Whatever you need for your home, Fat Boys Discount Store has it in stock. Our discounts are outrageous. We can beat any price, anywhere. Fat Boys Discount Store, Stellan Road, Breeding Hoop. Call us on 264-2873. Hasretin var Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Selam sana ey kutlu yar We submission, faith and patience You conveyed the noble message Brought us light through your guidance Peace be upon you, my beloved Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad Ya Nabi, Salam Alaika Ya Rasul 